Hello, everyone. How are you today? We are going to be talking about the best real estate Facebook posts to grow your following fast. If we've never met before, my name is Erin Chung and I help real estate agents get more leads, sales and referrals online. First and foremost, if you are watching this video either live or pre-recorded, please, 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 please comment below and let me know. I want to know where you're from in the world because the last video that I posted got 36,000 views. And so you never know where your next referral opportunity is going to come from. Plus, I just like to know where you guys are from because I think it's interesting and it's cool. Like I've been to 30 different countries and I always love knowing where people are from in the world because I'm a huge traveler. So selfishly, that's why I want to know as well. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I want to jump in because I have a lot of notes today because we're going to be covering a lot. Hi, Karen. I see you. Hello. So um, if you see me looking down, it's because I have notes and I don't want to miss anything because this is going to be a really, really important talk today. So please forgive me if I'm looking down. I usually don't do that, but um, let's go ahead and jump in. So today we're going to be talking all about real estate content for social media. Okay. So most of the time when I look at realtor pages, I can tell immediately if they're getting leads, sales, and referrals from social or not. It's like instant for me. So typically the people who are not getting leads from social media, they're making a couple of mistakes. And so let's talk about what those are just in case you happen to be making uh, any of these mistakes. Okay. So number one, they're using canned content. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that exactly means in just a second. But number one is canned content. Number two is you're only posting listings or you're only promoting yourself 24 seven, 365. That's a problem. <laughs> so number three, the third mistake that I see is you don't have a posting plan. Okay. So we're going to talk about all of these. Let's go ahead and break each one of these down real quick. So you know exactly uh, what to do and what not to do. Okay. So by the way, before we jump in, if you have questions about any of the things that I'm covering, please, please, please ask me in the comments because I'll go back at the end of this and I'll answer all of your comments live uh, on this call. Okay. So Mistake number one is you're posting canned content. So canned content is like those newsletters. Sometimes they're like social media posts, graphics, or these little memes that you see. And typically what ends up happening is someone will purchase like a membership to one of these sites and then they have all this like canned content that's you just grab the image and then you can just post it straight onto your social media account. And then what I typically see is that other agents will steal that content and then post it on their social accounts as well. And then it kind of just turns into this like meme fest. And there's a time and a place for that. But I would say canned content is not really my jam because it doesn't accurately represent your brand. Okay. It's not using your colors, your fonts, your photos. It doesn't showcase your personality. It doesn't represent you well, right? It's whatever that person created, you're just stealing it verbatim and posting it on yours. That's a problem. Okay. So let's talk about that for just a second. We need to kind of get a little bit of creative juice going here because when you post content that does accurately represent your style, your colors, your fonts, your photos, your personality, you can create a brand that you actually love, right? Like you want to be able to put your best foot forward, especially as a real estate agent, because if you create a brand that you love, you're proud of it. You're proud to send people to your website or to your social media or your blog post or your flyers or whatever. You're proud of it because it looks amazing and it separates you from your local competition. There is no benefit whatsoever in looking exactly like your local competitor. The reason why is because when a buyer or a seller looks at you, they can't tell the difference. It creates brand confusion when you all look the same. Okay. So that's kind of going without saying, but I see a lot of agents will kind of copy what other agents in their market are doing. Cause they don't, they're like afraid to stand out from the crowd. And I'm totally against that. Like quick side note, when I started honey bar media, I actually did. I looked like every other kind of marketing agency or web design agency out there. And it wasn't until I rebranded and really pushed it <laughs> with like my fonts, my colors, and my photos 
that's when everything took off because people remembered me. So if they were kind of choosing between a whole host of other people, I was the one that they remembered. Okay. So that's one of the other reasons why you can't be afraid to stand out. So one of the things is I always tell myself all the time, and you're feel free to take this and run too, is you have to be okay with attracting the best and repelling the rest. You have to be okay with that. Not every buyer or seller is going to be for you. And once you kind of get clear on your niche and who you are as a person and you're showcasing your your exact personality and your unique selling propositions, you will start attracting the clients that you like and you will start repelling other people and that's okay. People may love you or they may hate you, but trust me, there is no money in the middle, <laughs> okay? Vanilla does not equal dollar signs. It just doesn't. All right. So that's number one. Canned content. No, thanks. It's cheesy. It's, you know, like I said, there's a time and a place, maybe a meme here or there. But if you're posting exclusively canned content, let's move on from that. <laughs> OK, so number two, you're only posting listings. This is a big, 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 big one. OK, so you're posting listings, open houses, promos. You're just promoting yourself 24 seven. And it's like, eek, like that's yikes. No, 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 no. Okay. So if you're doing that, it's time for a little bit of tough love. Okay. So put yourself in a position right here. Okay. You would not be here right now on my Facebook page. If I just promoted myself 24 seven, like no one wants that. No one wants to be sold to a hundred percent of the time. It's just, it's, it's against all human nature. Okay. No one likes that. So I talk about this a lot, but let me give you another analogy. If you were going to follow a local insurance person or a financial planner or car salesman, and all they were talking about all the time was their products and their services, you would unfollow and unsubscribe with the quickness. I guarantee you. So put yourself in the mind of someone who's following you. Do they want to see your listings 24 seven? Probably not. The other thing is like, think about it. Why do people actually come to Facebook or social media or Instagram in general? They come to waste time, right? Like most of them are at work or they're at lunch. They are dropping off their kids or they have something to do and they're looking to get distracted and lost because they have time to kill. Okay. I've worked lots of corporate jobs and we were all on social media all the time because it's boring. Like work is boring. <laughs> so like you go to social media to waste time. You want to creep on people. You want to hang out with your friends and waste time. So people don't come for listings. They go to Zillow and Redfin for that. Whether you like it or you love it or you hate it, that's the reality. Okay. So people come to you on a social media account because they want to waste time. All right. So you want to give them things that they actually want to engage with and find value in. Okay. So here's the rule of thumb when it comes to promo posts. Okay. So you will have about 80% of your content should be educational, inspirational, or entertainment. Okay. That's where you can post some of the memes, the funny memes. All right. But 20% or less should be promotional. Okay. So that's the 80, 20 rule. All right. So this is a very, very delicate balance. If you get the balance right, people will love, love, love coming to your social media accounts in order to follow you and engage and subscribe and like and comment and share. But if that balance is off, then that's when you're going to get a lot of unfollows and unsubs. And side note, the Facebook algorithm, the way that it works is that if you're posting promo after promo after promo and you're not getting engagement, you will kill your Facebook page. Okay. So let me give you a little example. All right. So I come on here. I do these weekly Facebook lives, obviously every week on Tuesdays on my Facebook page. I have, I don't know, maybe like I have less than a thousand people who follow me on this Honey Bar Media page. Okay. But when I do these Facebook lives, like I told you before, I get upwards of like 36,000 views on these. Part of it is because I put a little bit of money behind it for ads, but the vast majority of it is because everyone's sharing my content with their colleagues and, you know, referral partners, et cetera. Okay. So if you are on a Facebook page and you have dead engagement and you have no one's liking, no one's commenting, no one's sharing, it's because you've abused <laughs> your page and that's a problem. Facebook will literally penalize you for doing that. Okay. So if you have a dead page, that's why. All right. Just quick side note. So by the way, if anyone says that Facebook page 
like engagement is dead, it's because they're not doing all of these things. They're not having an 80, 20 balance. They're not doing Facebook lives. They're not doing video and they're not providing valuable content. That's really what it comes down to. Okay. So mistake number three, you have no posting plan. I talk about this a lot as well. Let's Again, this is going to be a tough love session here. If you are posting on social media and you have zero plan, you're posting in vain. Just shut it down, roll it up and walk away. There's no reason to post on social media. Okay. Another side note. I'm sorry for all of these, but I get fired up about this stuff. So on my personal page, I don't think I've posted since like 2017. I swear. Like, and it was when I got married. Okay. So like... I feel like I use social media for business. Okay. Like being on social media and hanging out is not like, it's not my jam. Like people are very surprised by that a lot of times, but I don't like it. Like I hang out in groups. I love, love, love Facebook groups. And I love following the businesses that I like look up to as mentors. And I love that. And I love engaging with all of my community. That's amazing. But like, as far as just kicking it on social media, I'm not about that life, right? So for me, uh, it's more about, I use social media for business, okay? I use it because it makes money. So likewise for you, when you're using social media, you shouldn't be using it to just chill. Like, that's not why you as a content creator should be using it. You should be using it to make money, okay? So to that end, The reason why we are going to be on here with a plan is because you want to make money from social media. Okay. So if you're posting without a plan, it's not doing any good. So I'm not surprised if you're not getting likes, comments, shares, leads, referrals, sales from social media, you need a plan. All right. So let's talk about what a plan looks like for a real estate social media strategy plan. The easiest way to do this is to create six buckets of content, like six categories of content that you think that your community will find extremely valuable. All right. So what you do is you, um, you have a bucket and then you assign a day of the week to each bucket. So let me give you an example. Every Monday you can spotlight a local business. Every Tuesday you could do a real estate tip for buyer or like a buyer or a seller. Every Wednesday you could do a best of list best dog parks in my community, best spas, best wedding venues, best Mexican restaurants. It doesn't matter. Like you want to give value to your community. Thursdays, you can kind of do a sneak peek behind your business or your personal life, something really um, interesting about you that people would find valuable that will create no like and trust with you and your brand online. Fridays, you can post a list of fun local events that are upcoming over the weekend And then maybe Saturday you post your open house or your promos or your listings, right? That's perfect. That's a perfect 80, 20 balance right there. Okay. So in summary, when it comes to social media for realtors, you need to number one, post original content. Number two, you need to stick to an, a solid 80, 20 rule, 80% value, 20% promo. And then number three, you want to have a solid social media plan in place. All right. So if you have questions about that, post them below and I'm going to go through the comments uh, in just a couple seconds here and answer all of your questions. So speaking of social media planning, today's freebie is a free content calendar. So I've literally broken down all of those buckets for you and then all you have to do is fill in the blanks and that will allow you to create and schedule out all of your social media for the month, thereby saving you a ton of time and having a solid social media plan in place. If you want that, just go to honeybarmedia.com slash calendar and it's yours. Okay. That's also linked in the description as well. All right. So let's go and jump into the comments here and I'm just going to check and see if we have any comments available and we'll just run right through those. So, um, Karen, thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Ashley, I see you in Raleigh. Um, And I also see Nathan in Texas. Jeanette in Northern Virginia. Alex Reed. Hi, Alex. So um, Alex is coming from Edmonton. Thank you so much for tuning in, Alex. And then Jackie, always good to see you, Jackie, on all social media channels. Alvin, I love Alvin. (laughs) Good morning, Alvin. Heather, I'm so happy that you joined me. Karen talked about a meme fest. Yes, sometimes I see the meme fest happening and you can literally do a Pinterest search for funny real estate memes and you'll see all of them there and some of them are so cheesy. Like I have a hashtag and it's just called cheesy is easy, right? Cheesy marketing is super 
easy. It's the marketing that's hard is the creative marketing, but that's what's going to put you ahead of your competition. And that is actually what's going to make you to get leads, sales, and referrals from social media and any, any place really. Okay. So yeah, cheesy, easy. Katie, I see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's talking about basically the canned posts, uh, membership sites that are super popular. Um, they're kind of like blowing up all over the place. And she's asking, are they basically just buying followers? And I would say, I would say no. Um, I don't think that they are buying followers. I, well, some of them are, <laughs> let's be honest, but, um, I feel like they're not really buying followers. What's happening is, is agents want a silver bullet. Okay. They want a silver bullet. Everyone does. Who doesn't want that? Right. Everyone wants to be able to run a Facebook ad and get a hundred thousand followers and likes and comments and shares. That's not how it works. Whether you're door knocking, cold calling or prospecting on social media, it doesn't matter. Marketing is hard. Okay. Lead generation is hard. So I think that's what it is. I think they're just looking for something simple. So they think that they can come to the canned site. They can grab that stuff, post it directly from the site, right onto their social media and get engagement. And it may work the first couple of times. Um, but then after, if you're not mixing it up and doing other things, it's not going to work. And that's just the reality of the situation. Um, Brandy, Brandy's saying, I've been trying to come up with one. Thank you just in time. Yes, Brandy. This is the reason why I'm answering this is because I get so many comments and uh, questions about creating a social media plan. So I've done something similar in the past, but today I just wanted to lay it out like straight up with you guys. Like this is what you need to do if you're not doing it. So thank you so much for your comment. Um, Anissa, I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you so much for joining in. Kayla, so good to see you here. And Cindy, always from Nashville, thank you so much for tuning in. Karen is asking, so what if you post unique content but still don't get much engagement? Okay, so what I would recommend for that is there's a couple of ways that you can get around the engagement issue. So first and foremost, I do want to make one clarification. Um, engagement is amazing, but of course, our primary goal is always going to be leads, right? So if you're engaging, if you're, if you're posting content and you're not getting that much engagement, but you are getting a ton of leads from it, that's a win all day long. Okay. So that, I just wanted to throw that out there just in case, you know, anyone was, was wondering about that leads over engagement all day long. However, if you are not getting a lot of leads and you feel like your page is dying <laughs> because you're not getting a lot of leads, first and foremost, Facebook lives, like all day long. So Again, what I was telling, talking about in the beginning of this call is that like, I don't have more than a thousand people. I mean, I'm growing my Facebook page day by day, but I don't have more than a thousand people right now. And I really don't care because I get more than a thousand people that engage, like, and comment and share every single week, which tells me that my posts are almost about a hundred percent of my following is actually seeing these posts because they're Facebook lives. But because I get likes, comments, shares, and engagement on it, people are actually sharing the post, which means that I'm getting more engagement than I actually intended from my, just my following. Right? So with Karen's question, the way that I would do this is Facebook live. Karen, I happen to know, um, that you are amazing with video. So that's like your jam. So Facebook live should be super easy for you. Okay. So even if you were to just get on every Tuesday and talk about a buyer tip, a seller tip, a market update, you know, those types of things, that'll go very, very far for you. And then because I know that you happen to be the YouTube queen, that you can easily just download those Facebook lives and upload them as YouTube videos that you can be searched forever. <laughs> so that's a really, really good plan for you. And then also putting a little bit of money behind your Facebook lives is actually a really good strategy because, um, I mean, you can see as you're scrolling through the comments, even on this Facebook live right now, you can see there's a lot, a lot of comments and likes and shares. So the way that you can kind of push your posts out into the newsfeed with the Facebook lives is through all of those comments. And this is kind of a weird thing. This is maybe a little bit complicated, but Karen, I know you'll get this. When someone sees it like as an ad in their newsfeed, 
the first thing humans do is we tend to look at the comments to see if anybody else has engaged with it. Cause you, you're looking for social proof, right? Like that's why the restaurant with, or the club that has the line out the door is always going to be more popular than one that's, you know, has open seating because people want things that other people are already doing. Right. So if you're doing a Facebook live and you get comments, likes, shares, and then you put, put a little bit of money behind that. I'm by little, I mean like five, 10 bucks. And that goes out into your local market and people see all of the likes, comments, and shares. Facebook is going to kind of push that out even more and you'll get a lot of engagement organically, which is free, just by doing that, okay? So that's another thing that I would probably recommend. If your original content is not going very far, do videos. Like I, everyone talked about the power of video and I was like, yeah, okay, it's real. Like I'm, t- I'm telling you right now, just person to person, it is real. And live video is even greater, okay? So please just take my word on that. Get in front of the camera and start. And Karen, that's not for you. Obviously, you're already doing that. So um, Henry, thank you so much for tuning in. It's your first time here. Welcome to my page. I do this every single week, um, Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. And let's see, Kayla's asking... How do you feel about posting video bloopers? Okay, so I love it. I mean, I think if you can pull it off, and especially if if you are an agent that happens to be a funny person, yes. Like, if that's part of your personality, if you're quirky, if you're, you know, funny, all of the above, yes. If that's part of your personality, showcase your personality. Because you want to build like, trust, know, and remember factor. Okay, so me personally, I'm a former middle school teacher. I used to teach middle school history, sixth grade to eighth grade. I was a substitute teacher for five years in addition to that. So education is my thing. That's people ask me all the time, like, how did you get good in front of camera? I don't think I'm that good, but I feel like it's because I taught sixth graders and you guys are engaged adults who want to actually hear what I have to say. This is easy peasy for me. Okay. <laughs> like try teaching a sixth grader history. It's really hard. All right. So that's me. If you are a quirky person or if you're a funny person and you want to showcase your personality by doing bloopers, yes. Like why not test it? I think it will be great. All right. Oh, by the way, the posts that get the most likes, comments, and shares are educational, inspirational, or entertainment. Okay. So if you're a funny person and you feel like you can pull off entertainment well, do it. Okay. That's going to be like my advice. I can't. That's why I don't do it. But education is my thing. So that's, that's what I stick to. Kelly, thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Katie's asking, okay, so how are you doing the comments on the screen? Okay, so comments on the screen. I get a lot of comments about this too. I use a service called Ecamm. It's like a one-time fee, totally worth it. And it allows me to project live video from my computer. Um, and I love it. So you can use Ecamm or you can ne- use another service called BeLive TV. BeLive TV is free, but they put like a little logo in the corner and I don't like that. So I don't use that one. Um, Anissa, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do, like as far as tuning in and commenting and all of that stuff. I really, really appreciate it. Carla, yes on the screen comments, super cool. Thank you so much. Justin is asking, what do you think about boosting posts to increase engagement? Worth it? What about the contests? Okay, so Justin, um, I haven't mastered com- contests. Like, let me just start there. I haven't mastered it. Uh, I only teach about the things that I know and the things that I that are in my wheelhouse and the things that I've personally tested and that work. If it doesn't work, I don't talk about it because I have no experience and I'm not qualified to talk on that. So contests, not qualified. Uh, what do I think about boosting posts and increasing engagement? I am definitely qualified to talk about boosting post and increasing engagement uh, because I have an entire academy that talks about exactly that. Uh, I think that, let me, I don't want to go on a tangent here, but I want to answer your question. Okay. So right now, Facebook is the cheapest form of advertising that you can purchase. It's It's going to be the most bang for your buck. Okay. So in the past, it's been billboards, newsletters, Uh, I'm sorry, newspapers and commercials. However, the eyeballs are not on newspapers. They're not on commercials because everybody has like 
the ability to skip past those now. Um, <clears throat> billboards, maybe if you're in LA, you're sitting in traffic for four hours a day. But where is everyone? They're all on Facebook. Okay. And Facebook allows you to target so well that you are going to be paying less per view, per eyeball than any other platform. So if you can make a subtle mindset shift, if you have the budget, obviously if you don't have the budget, you have to do free social media posting for now and blog posting and videos and YouTube and all that. But if you have the budget, what I want you to do is I want you to look at Facebook like this. If you were to go to Las Vegas today, and if you were to find a slot machine that was broken and for every $1 you put in, you got $3 back, you would never ask yourself the question, what should my budget be, right? So in my business, for every $1 I put in in Facebook ads, I get $6 back. So <laughs> for me, I'm trying to find as many avenues as possible to give Facebook as much money as possible because there's nowhere else on earth that I can get that return. Okay. I didn't start off that way. I started off with blogging, with YouTube, with video and with Pinterest and of course Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So I'm not telling anyone if you don't have the budget to, to spend as, everything you have. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like sometimes you have to use a tortoise strategy where you're, you know, you're kind of inching to it. But once you have a budget, you can use a hair strategy and go faster. And the way that you can do that is through adver paid advertising. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Cindy, Cindy is asking, <clears throat> excuse me, what is another way to keep business your <laughs> What is another way to keep your business page from dying if video Facebook Live is not your jam? Okay, Cindy, tough love time. You, we are going to be a camera first society within five years. If Facebook Lives and video is not your jam, you got to make it your jam. <laughs> okay, so I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but that's the truth, and I'm always going to tell you the truth. Okay, you have to make it your jam. Do you? Let's okay. Let's be real. Do you think that I want to get up here every Tuesday and do this? Like do hair, makeup, lights, all of that? No. The answer is no, I do not. But again, when it comes to lead generation, we need to do hard things. Okay. And <clears throat> it's not going to be easy for everybody. I, I totally get that. Not everyone's going to be an ace in front of the camera, but it's something you're going to have to work towards. If you go to YouTube and you go to my very first videos, you will be shocked and appalled. <laughs> like it was horrible, like with a capital H. Okay. Horrible. So every day, like, especially as I do the Facebook lives every week, I get better and better and better. And I have a long way to go, but like, I don't feel that debilitating fear that I feel now, like that. I, I mean, I don't feel that now that I, I don't feel a debilitating fear now. Like I did when I first started, when I first started, like I would be so afraid to get on live camera that I almost felt sick. Okay. So if you feel that way now, just know it's going to come with practice. All right. It's going to come with practice. Plus here's the thing. If you have a dying page, the easiest way to revive it is through video because that's what Facebook gives the most um, like reach to right now. It's just it is what it is. And you know that because you're in the academy. <laughs> so. All right. Um, Alvin. OK, first of all, Alvin Tapia is the man like, OK, how long should Facebook live posts be? I've been running them around two minutes average. Okay, so Alvin, I happen to know you also love video and you, your special superpower is running videos that are incredibly funny, okay? So Alvin, for you, what I would say is Facebook Lives, you gotta think about it like this. Shoot for 10 minutes, just making sure that you are getting um, getting your point across, right? If yours, if your video is educational, um, but it happens to be a little bit humorous here and there, that's, that's perfectly fine. Shoot for 10 minutes. And here's why, um, it takes a little bit of time for people to, to log on. Like when I first started this live session, there was like barely anyone on here. And then now there's like lots of you on here right now. So it takes time for people to kind of like check their emails or check their, you know, whatever, and the figure out that you're live and then jump on. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, <clears throat> 
the longer you stay on, the more people like that are just kind of scrolling through their Facebook news feeds, they'll see you like moving around in their video feed, like in their news feed as a video, and then they'll stop and see what you're talking about. So just shoot for 10 minutes. Uh, if it goes to 15, that's even better uh, because you'll give more people an opportunity. But the one caveat is like jump right into the meat of it. So like right now I'm taking time to answer questions and I'm kind of like a little bit off topic here, but I would never do that in the beginning because most of the people that watch your Facebook lives are watching on the replay. So if you're like kind of messing around for the first 10 minutes, the replay people are going to be like uh, snoozeville and they're going to bounce. Okay. So get right into it. You like when I press go live, literally within five seconds, I'm already talking about what we're going to be doing today. Okay. So just jump right into it. And the way that I personally like to structure my Facebook lives so that that way they're kind of the same every single time is, um, I have it right here. So like I always do a hook. So the hook is the title, right? So today's title is today. We're going to be talking about real estate Facebook posts to grow your following fast. That's my title for today. The intro is I introduced myself. I did that at the very beginning of this call. I always have a call to comment. And in this case, my call to comment was ask me questions. Tell me where you're from. Okay. So that's the next thing. Story is number one, two, three, four. So story is number four. I always try to tell a quick little story because humans respond well to stories. Our brains are wired for stories. And then I always make three points. And in this case, my three points were post original content, stick to the 80, 20 rule and have a solid social media real estate plan in place. Okay. That was my points. And then I do a call to action at the end and questions. All right. So if you can kind of do a template of every single time of what you're going to be talking about on your Facebook live, it goes by really fast because you've planned everything out. All right. So hopefully that helps you Alvin. Brenda, I would say I'm more inspirational, probably because of my faith. It's hard for me to separate the two. Just who I am. Any tips? Okay. So Brenda, <clears throat> I am a faith-based person as well. Um, that is something that is very, very important to me. So I ident identify with you a lot um, when it comes to uh, what your question is. Okay. So for you, quotes might be a really, really big thing. So you can jump into a program like Canva, C-A-N-V-A, and you can create inspirational quotes um, around your faith or just inspirational in general. So for me, for Honey Bar Media, like real estate agents struggle with mindset first and foremost, because any entrepreneur, which a real estate agent is, struggles with mindset. And so I like posting inspirational quotes because it really kind of gets people resets them back into action. Okay. So for you, if you want to post inspirational quotes, I would say you can definitely do that all day. If you want to do a weekly Facebook live, um, for your local community about like what's happening in the community as far as like charities or things uh, like some people even do like, uh, dogs, like, you know, at the pound who need to be rescued, for instance, like whatever your passion is, you can easily turn that into a Facebook live. You just have to be a little creative. So that's a really good question. And <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> Kayla, yes. Like the video, you have to make it your jam. Like you have to, it's, it's not an option these days. Marcy, hashtag we can do hard things. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There are no silver bullets. Like if you are listening to someone who's getting on a soapbox and telling you it's so easy to do this or that or the other, they're lying. Okay. Like they may be telling you how to generate leads, but they're not telling you how to follow up with them or convert them or close them or anything else. Like we have to do hard things. My jam is not cold calling and door knocking. It's online lead generation, but it's still hard. It's harder in some respects, actually in most respects than cold calling and door knocking because cold calling and door knocking, a lot of people can do less. Yes, you can tweak it to be better and better and refine it. But internet marketing is learning. It's like a whole different language. And anyone who's in my academy, who's listening on this call knows that it's hard. It's not easy. It takes time and focus and creativity. It's hard. Okay. So yes, do hard things. That is what is going to separate you from a competitor who is lazy across town, period. 
And finally, Alvin, I've done zero Facebook Live for my fan page. All of mine have been posted for my personal page. Solution. Okay, the reason why I post Facebook Lives on my Facebook page is because um, I would get more engagement if I posted in my Real Estate Marketing Collective group. That's my, my free group for subscribers. If you're not a member, hashtag plug, you can become a member. Just go to honeybarmedia.com slash group and you can join, okay? So I'd get a lot more engagement if I just posted everything to my page or to my personal profile and just targeted realtors. You can do that. However, the reason why I don't do that is because you cannot advertise. And advertising on Facebook is a big part of it, right? So I, I, you can only advertise from your page, not from your group, not from your personal. So I do Facebook Lives on my, my Honey Bar Media page, and then I can boost it out to real estate agents like you who are interested in this topic. So for you, you would do a Facebook Live on your page. Even if you get very few engagement or live viewers, that's okay. Because again, most people will watch in the replay, number one. And then number two, once you put a little bit of money behind it in your local community, your community can see it, okay? So that's the benefit of doing it on your page as opposed to your personal. And just like a lot of people are actually watching this in the group right now, in, in my paid group and my free group, you can share it from your page to your groups or from your page to your personal profile, okay? And that's the way to do it. So, you know. <laughs> All right, so that is the last question. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and wrap it on up. All right. So if you have questions, if you're watching the replay, ask them below. And I always go back and I answer all of the questions after the fact as well. Thank you so much for everybody that tuned in. This was a long one. I try to keep them short, but you had a lot of questions and I want to make sure to answer all of your questions. All right. So don't forget, if you haven't got the freebie today, please go to honeybarmedia.com forward slash calendar. And I will look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you so much, you guys. See you later. Bye.